After Cologne, we continue our tour of this region of Germany. You certainly recognize this music, as it is indeed Ludwig van Beethoven, a German composer and conductor. As you may have guessed, today we are heading to Germany to discover Bonn, the city where the artist was born on December 16, 1770. And in the next episode, we will go to Koblenz, a gem nestled at the confluence of the Rhine and Moselle rivers. Upon arriving in Bonn, we cross the bridge to head towards the city center. We pass by the Bonn Theater building and then go under a bridge filled with graffiti. We reach the old town and catch sight of the church St. Remigius that we decide to visit. The construction, originally designed as a monastery, began in 1272 by the Franciscan order and was completed in 1307. Beethoven's parents got married here on November 12, 1767, and Ludwig was baptized here on December 17, 1770. At the age of 12, he replaced the main organist, playing the morning mass in the church and was hired as an assistant organist the following year. Upon leaving the church, we walk a few meters and arrive at the market square. The charming cafes and restaurants overlooking the square are perfect for a little break after a long walk visiting the historical sites of Bonn. On the square, we admire the market fountain. It was built in 1777 and founded by the citizen. The obelisk was once crowned by an electoral hat which was knocked down by Napoleon's soldiers during the French occupation and was never replaced. There is also the magnificent Old Town Hall located there. It's one of the most beautiful buildings in the city center, although it's close to the public and is occasionally used for events. In any case, we greatly appreciate its splendid exterior facade with pastel tones of pink and blue. Dating back to the 18th century, it was built to fulfill the wish of Prince Elector Clemens August. Traditionally, it's on the beautiful black broad iron staircase of the Old Town Hall that all the presidents of the Republic since 1949 made their first public appearance and where many distinguished guests have delivered speeches such as General de Gaulle or John Fitzgerald Kennedy to name a few. And for good reason, as the city was the capital of West Germany for a long time during the Cold War. The building, with its double staircase, dormer windows and mansard roof, is worth a visit for its evident beauty. We continue on our way, and just behind the square, we find the Koblenz Gate, an integral part of the university, and a must-visit passage along Adenauer's promenade to reach the old town. A golden statue of the Archangel adorns the facade. The vast wooded park and its lovely lawns are inviting for relaxation. Surrounding the park, the building housed one of the largest and most prestigious universities in the country. It was founded on October 18, 1818, by King Frederick William III of Prussia. It has seen famous former students pass through its door, Konrad Adenauer, Joseph Goebbels, Karl Marx or Friedrich Nietzsche. It's worth noting that it is the city's largest employer. The place is pleasant for a walk, a moment of relaxation, or playing games. After the Rhineland became Prussian in 1815, the Evangelical Community of All Citizens was founded in 1816. On December 15, 1866, the cornerstone was laid and it was inaugurated on December 1871. 
It was built according to the plans of August Dikoff, the master builder of the University of Bonn. Destroyed in 1944, a temporary church was erected and from 1951 to 1954, it was reconstructed. Next, we head to Munsterplatz, which is the largest square in Bonn. It's known for its statue of the local prodigious composer Ludwig van Beethoven, which was erected in 1845. And you will have plenty of opportunity to admire it from your table since the square is filled with cafes and also hosts numerous festive gatherings. An essential stop during any visit to Bonn is a Bonnminster, which offers both a moment of respite and a leap back in time. It's one of the oldest churches in Germany, having been built between the 11th and 13th centuries. It's 96 meters high, as beautiful on the outside as it's on the inside, it boasts a lovely Romanesque cloister and a Baroque interior decoration. We can admire the Rococo Choir, the organ built by Kleiss in 1961, the Paul Wegman window in the nave, as well as the cloister and the crypt. The Martins Fontaine, in front of the west portal of the cathedral, was created in 1902 by a Berlin sculptor, George Christian Heinrich Kutschmann. The scene depicts children trying to gather geese for the Martins Day celebration. During World War II, the bronze figures were melted down and reconstructed in 1958 by the Ingeborg von Rath using old plaster molds. We continue our walk following in Beethoven's footsteps and stop at the old cemetery. It's an oasis on the outskirts of the city center. It was built in 1715 by Elector Joseph Clemens for the population, travelers and soldiers. In 1787, it became the main cemetery of the city and transitioned from a burial ground for ordinary citizens of Bonn to the final resting place of many famous individuals. In the 19th century, it was transformed into a park-like area. The 19th century tombs reflect the culture and intellectual history of Bonn. Robert and Clara Schumann, as well as renowned professors of Bonn, were buried in the old cemetery. And it's here that we also discover the tomb of Beethoven's mother. In Bonn, nearly 300 cherry trees adorn several main streets of the Altstadt, mainly Breitestrasse and Erstrasse. Many visitors come to celebrate the Hanami, a Japanese ritual of admiring cherry blossoms. A photo contest is even organized there in April. Unfortunately, too late for us. We still have to discover the Beethoven's house. An essential part of any visit to Bonn. Located at number 20 Bongasse, this house is where the famous German composer was born. A museum was established there more than a century later, in 1893. It consists of two buildings, one facing the street and an annex in the garden where young Ludwig spent the early years of his life. The museum houses the largest collection of objects that belonged to the German genius. And we 
conclude our visit to Bonn by strolling along the Rhine before heading to the street food market. This is here that we end our day with a nice weather, nice view on the Rhine, and nice food. See you soon for the discovery of Koblenz in the next episode.